My name is Caleb Musgrave from Hiawatha First Nation. I'm Mississauga Anishinaabe, or Anishinaabe. And uh, we're working in the sugar bush, making maple sugar. What do you look for in a tree? Why is this a good tree? The sugar maples have a higher content of sugar, hence the name sugar maple. But at the end of the day, a maple is a maple. You can do it with a box elder. I'm not too particular on that so much as the size. So I wanted about almost as big as this tapping mallet. That one's pretty close. Too skinny and you're gonna start bleeding the tree dry. This is a flat cedar spile. And it's the traditional way for guiding the sap from the tap down to your bucket. If it's a straight grain cedar, you can go real quick, go steady. It smells real nice when you do that too. And then you just square it off, take off that bark. You make it that long if you have to, but I usually keep them a little under a foot. So about that distance. Make it once there, make it there, break it off. And then measure it off to my tapping wedge. This is what I used to actually make the holes in the tree. Just like that. Again, I'm not seeing any sap flowing quite yet, but it will start to flow like the others. I'll set that in there. Give it a few light taps just to help hold it on. This is a tap we did two days ago, and it's been slowly filtering in. It's still getting really cold at night, and even during the daytime, it was about minus eight this morning around 9 a.m. So it's this is all pure sap. This is all just pure sap coming down the slat and dripping down. There's more going down, but my nephews wanted to have some th something to chew on while they're out here, so they broke off the icicles and ate them. Um, we got some in the bucket down there, frozen in with a little bit of sap, and you can still see drips coming down as the day's been warming up. And then every day we come out and collect that sap, and we just continue to boil it down and boil it down. What we do is we traditionally pour it either into molds of basswood that are carved out to be candies, or you pour them into birch bark cones like this. And there's a knot in the bottom, and all the, uh, the sugar kind of glues and bonds and welds to that so it can't fall out. And this is how we carry it. That way you can hang it and it's not gonna fall out. Mice can't climb up and get into it. Rain will drip down the sides. You have bundles of like 20 or 50 of these for trading. And that was how we used to use it as a barter. So all you do is just set it up like that. You'd have many of them lined up if you had enough of them. And you just pour them in, let them cool. It takes about 10 minutes for them to cool. And then you can hang it up. If you think about it, everybody just thinks about the sugar that comes out of this, the type of sucrose or glucose sugar that comes out of it. But there's also all the vitamins, all the minerals, the uh, nutritional fiber and stuff that's in that sap that's being concentrated as well. A lot of people that make traditional medicines will actually use maple syrup as an additive. 